All right, welcome back. Today we're on a drive to make this video for you guys. I'm here with Leland. What are we going to talk about today, Leland? So, what are some reasons why someone wouldn't, would not want to get into real estate development? That's, that's, that's a good question because I'm in it, right? So why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you get into the land development game? Well, I think for starters, it's the most complex aspect as far as my concern and my understanding from my experience. Again, we're just talking Steve's experience. So my experience is that it's the most complex, most brain damage, <laughs> hardest thing to do in in real estate and the payouts are super slow we're but, talking like super good, slow right <laughs> well that's that's what we hope right that's what we hope and so there's so much risk to trying to figure out for example whether or not well there's so many different ways in which you have to do some reporting and some studying about the land and understanding what it is you're buying to figure out whether or not it's even a really good deal. And all that time, money, and effort could be for not. So you could spend a lot of money trying to figure out whether or not the deal's even good, like on market analysis, on geo, trying to figure out topography, surveys, engineering and then also talking to the city spending time with the city a lot of time with them arguing with the community because they hate you because you're the suckiest person to ever live uh -huh. especially when it comes to trying to make something affordable for their kids they all hate you for it so you asked a great question though you asked whether the payouts are good i don't think they're as good as everybody makes them to be uh -huh. i don't own an island I'm not off in the Bahamas right now, and uh, maybe I just haven't gotten there yet, or maybe I'm trying to do the wrong deals or something, I don't know. But it's not as, it's not as gravy train as everyone wants to paint it out to be. And the timeline in which I, I can do a deal, a development deal, and it might take me three years to see a dollar, whereas somebody else could go do a wholesaling 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 deals in the same time frame and make pretty close to the same amount of money, I'm sure. Oh. So I don't know, the, why am I doing this to myself? Well, I, I feel like I have an affinity for it. That's one reason. But who knows when you really step back and start looking at all the different ways in which you can make, real, make money in real estate and the, the brain damage that comes with land development and the timelines that come with it. Maybe I'm, I'm just a dumb individual and didn't make the smartest decision there. Uh, I think that you also have to be willing to be the bad guy in every Hallmark video. Every Hallmark video has a developer who is the sucky individual that is taking over a farm or some historic venue that everybody's emotionally tied to and uh, I guess that's that's me in everybody's eyes and that I'm just looking out for the bottom line uh -huh. and how to make a ton of money whereas everybody else can be spiritual and have good intentions but not me, I can't. I have to be 100% temporal and just be out for my own wallet and bottom line. So I think I'm a little bit jaded to that. I also think landowners are hard to navigate, not by their own choice, but by to, to merit some of the stigma that's on the land development game. Developers in the past have done landowners wrong. I'm not saying that developers have not done that. And that's part of the reason why I actually have an affinity for development is because I want to change the narrative there. 
I want to do things a lot different than things have been done in the past where we're not trying to tie people up, but rather contribute and add value to these landowners. And we're trying to just be a win and not just a negotiation, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. Is the landowner usually pretty defensive when you work with them? Oh, absolutely. This is their life. They, they've accumulated it through hard work and effort. Most in, instances, it was their dad was a farmer, their grandpa was a farmer, and so on and so forth. So there's definitely some year-over-year -year compounding emotional reasons to why they value the land the way they do. And I'm not against that. I'm actually for that. And so we, we do something we call legacy value, where anything that you've accumulated prior to us ever even coming into the picture is yours. So if your today market value on your land is a million dollars for simple math, we don't touch the million dollars. That's just your deal. And the only value that we see is any value that we add. Then even then, we're sharing those profits and those added values to, to these landowners. And so they're making money on us and we're not really making money on them. And so we try to make it as, as much of a win-win as possible. But yeah, when they initially connect with us or we connect with them, they're a little hesitant because they're not sure what our agenda is. They're not sure who we are. They're um, wanting to protect what they've accumulated, which I totally get. And they're afraid that somebody's not gonna come with the spirit and light in which we should all entreat each other with. And so that's where we try to, like I was saying, uh, I, I am totally understanding from the history of land development and how landowners can feel the way they, they do. But what I want people to understand is that over here, I understand that I don't take their land with me when I die and that I have a stewardship and a spiritual uh, alignment that needs to happen that I have to respect because I think it's God's country. God owns, he's the one that created it. Again, this is my dictionary and we have to use my dictionary because I'm the one that's speaking. You that's receiving, use the universe or whatever ownership you want, but none of us own the land. And uh, we all have a stewardship to the land. And uh, that stewardship is to be respected and not, and not come from a, a, a light of entitlement. And so I don't look at it as, oh, I'm entitled to make a bunch of money here. I look at it as, why would God have me here? What, what's the intent? How am I supposed to be of a blessing in a service here? How can I align with what he would have done on his land, on his ground? Because, again, if I die, it's going to go to somebody else it's going to carry on regardless of me that that ought to tell you how much ownership i have is because it's going to keep going regardless of me and then even when somebody buys a home at some point them and their family more than likely are going to move on and move to different pastures and different places and that house is going to be backfilled with another family and i don't believe that life's just a blitz of chaos and there's not a universal methodical pathway that's being paved for each individual. I think that it's very individual and I think it's very important that we respect the reason and get in alignment with that reason of why we're doing what we're doing and why we're next to who we are. So, for example, I need Leland in this case, to help me with these videos, Leland needs me to help him with what he, where he wants to go. And my neighbor is the same way. 
And we're all trying to create an impact that goes way beyond just a dollar and cents thing. And there's some spiritual components that outweigh the economics here temporally. And that we have to keep that spirit and light in mind as we're carrying out our business. And so in my case, that's how I look at it. And so I'm very respectful of their position. And I hope that as we navigate more and more landowners, they can start to change the narrative in the industry and see that people do development with the spirit and light as the forefront and money as the, 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 the byproduct and not the uh, main result. And so anyways, those are some of the, the reasons in why I do it. Again, from the reasons why somebody wouldn't want to do it is for all those same reasons because everybody kind of looks at you sideways from the get-go. They kind of are questioning who you are and uh, you're starting from a, a stigma rather than a good sound footing. And then the community will rave about how you're just money grubbing and, and not trying to do a, a community a service. And you'll, you'll have your political municipal uh, application meetings where everybody shows up and tells you how sucky you and your family and your kids are and for future generations how sucky they are. And I think that sometimes I don't appreciate how that comes across because uh, I'm more than likely missing my kids' dance recital for that or my my kid's football practice or game or something like that. I try not to miss his games and stuff, but at the same point, I've been in situations where everybody was ringing me a new one and I was just sitting there going, why am I doing this now? My payouts on my risk here is probably not for another three or four years. And all I'm gonna do is bleed and bleed and bleed financially for the next three or four years. And all the while, the community and everybody's going to ostracize me and hate me and, and uh, look at me in the wrong light. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I think in those moments, that's where I question why I do what I do. So that would probably be the major reason. And then you can go on and talk about fighting with Rocky Mountain Power and Dominion, who are monopolies and cities who aren't willing to contribute anymore they just want to ride and then you know uh i think you have market analysis and and the effort to try to understand whether or not it's a good deal and then you can get into a development like we've we've been before where we ran into bedrock and that was three hundred dollars an hour that just blew through 30 grand overnight you know and we didn't uh, we didn't budget for that so the risk is high the payouts are slow the public we love you isn't really there and so for all those reasons those are I, I I hate talking so Debbie down but that's just the reality sometimes so any other questions from that? Leland, that was a long-winded no, spell. No, that definitely answered my question. Okay. So find us at McClary Company. And I'll actually you know, talk to more reasons why we do what we do and why we're in the space. It's not all doom and gloom like I'm saying. But for today's question, why wouldn't you do it? Just so people have a raw reel on some of the downsides of development and the risk. Those are the those are the points we discussed today, but I tried to pepper in a few of the, the spiritual reasons and why I do what I do, because that's really my motive. So find us at McClaryCompany.com. We'd love to be of a blessing and a service to you if we can. Talk to you again soon.